Hey there, flesh and bones people, my name is Dami Skin and this is Unity. Cross part room convention developer in the just for Solana's release. And if you just thought, how does this dummy move like a human? I assume you're not an animator. And that you're 90, cause no one would think that. Either way, this is your lucky day, cause I'll show you how I move it like this by going through the process I followed to bring an animation from the non-existence all the way inside of Unity. Which time you can use in your game. Or you can waste your time making a furry do some weird stuff. And as long as you're not my child, I don't care. Yeah, not my problem. And it's very simple, like literally dummy proof. And it's all thanks to Plask, a program that lets you generate an animation by just filling it with some footage of a humanoid creature, just like me. And you. I assume. The first step is of course going to Plask.ai, where you'll find this trippy animation I can use to entertain myself for a good 5 minutes. Ok, let's get started. You can decorate this empty 3D space by dragging in one of these uh, characters, and of course you will choose the mannequin, cause dummies are the best, and having no face is still better than having 3 quarters of a face. Now zoom, rotate and pan to admire the mannequin from all the angles. Next we bring in the video we want to extract the animation from, and I could record myself inside of Blask, but for this demonstration I'm gonna do it elsewhere. Hey, welcome to my studio, I got walls and there's a camera there, it's all set up and ready just to record it. Except it's kinda dark in here, maybe I can use those lights. If you could rotate those towards me, it would be nice, yeah? There more? more? Oh, go, go, yeah, go. Now, uh, let's say you, you're making a Just Dance kind of game. Then dance, cause I can dance. I'm gonna instead uh, swing a sword. <laughs> right, that was kinda awesome. Grab the footage, drop it on the library and let the thing do its thing. I'm gonna trim it down to the section I'm actually interested in. I'll extract and I give it a name, like whatever, a name, uh... It's a nice name. Once it's ready, give the character the new animation and play. Actually stop, um, 100 is not gonna be enough, the loop is gonna be too short. So just make it 1000 and everything should fit in. Play. And in case you're wondering, I'm holding a shield with the left arm. I know what I'm doing. And stop. 230. This is gonna be exactly what you'll be exporting. If I were to leave it on 1000, I'd have 770 frames of animation frozen on the last valid keyframe. Which a pro tip might be a good idea if you're trying to make a breakdance move. If you like it, right click and export, and save it somewhere. Take that FBX file and slap it in the project window. And it's done, except for the most important part. Don't forget to make your animation type humanoid. Is that the most important part? Well, it is important. And there's the actual animation, you can just duplicate that and you don't even need the FBX file anymore. And to show it off, I brought someone who knows quite a drill when it comes to swords. I mean, he's got like 18 dozen hours of playtime on Elder Scrolls games. I'll make a timeline for it, so make an object. Create timeline. Save timeline. Lock timeline so it doesn't go away. Give the character a parent so it doesn't get teleported toward origin when the animation plays. Drag the character and make an animation track. Then just place the animation next to it. So, how's the feel? You know what? I'll give you that. It doesn't really look like a sword thing. Actually, kinda. Yeah, right. Looks more like a. a giant smash. Yeah, which is exactly what I was trying to do. That's it, that's it, uh, that's all. Uh, now you can go ahead and make animations for your own giants. See ya. And stay away from forests.